So what is going on with the Wallabies? The second Eddie Jones era as head coach of Australia hasn't exactly gone according to plan. Three games, three defeats, not too much to build upon and probably a lot of people who maybe are a little underwhelmed of maybe the immediate bounce they were expecting to see from the side. So that's what I'm talking about in this video. I've picked out a couple of things uh, that I think are noteworthy. You can have your say in the comments section because quite frankly, there are a lot of areas right now that we could point towards to explain what is going wrong and what is going on with the Wallabies. So make sure you drop a comment down below. If you can subscribe to the channel and like the video as well, and it's an extra bonus for me, so I'd appreciate it if you can do that. But let's get into it. So just to reiterate what I said in the intro, I think there are a number of different things that we could point towards to help answer the question of what is going on with the Wallabies at the moment. I think you could point towards their set piece, which hasn't been super strong. I think their line out has functioned OK, but the scrum, I think there's still question marks over. The fact that they don't have a real crunching forward pack, their attacking game hasn't flowed as they would want it to. They were the lowest try scorers in the rugby championship uh, and their kicking game as well has probably left a little bit to be desired. So there are a lot of areas we could point towards. I've identified a few different things in the video and mainly it centres around selection. Now, a couple of caveats before I get into some graphics. I appreciate it's two coaching regimes, so that's always going to impact selection to a degree. Um, different blocks of fixtures as well. The autumn fixtures that I referenced, they had five games in a row, so there's generally obviously going to be some rotation in there as well. And also now the fact that it's the start of a year with the World Cup in it, I think coaches and teams for the most part are kind of rotating, trying to work out who their best combinations are ahead of France. So there are some caveats, but I also still think there's some really interesting things in there from the Wallabies perspective. Number one, I think there's a consistency of selection which highlights a few issues and then and then there's an inconsistency of selection which highlights some different issues as well. So I'll get into all of that. Firstly, this is the starting 15s that Eddie Jones has gone for in his opening three games, South Africa, Argentina and New Zealand in that rugby championship. Paints a couple of pictures I think because if I bring up the next graphic, those are the players that have started all three games. So I think he's fairly sure on his strongest front row because James Slipper also started the South Africa and Argentina game and was on the bench for the All Blacks. Obviously, Ala Alatoa is now injured, so who comes in for him is fascinating. And then Skelton, I don't think anyone will be too shocked that an Eddie Jones team, when you've got a massive, brilliant, world-class second row like Will Skelton, is going to be a linchpin in the middle of that. Valentini is kind of interesting. I really like him as a number eight. A lot of people would like to see more of Pete Samu who can, I know, play in different areas across the back row. And Lange Gleeson, I thought, actually looked pretty good on the Northern Tour at the end of last year. And then Marika Corabetti on the wing, who's been a bit of an ever-present. The final thing, actually, to mention with this graphic is Nick White, Quay Cooper started two of the games. Len Iketau started two of the games and then got injured. Samu Karevi uh, came back in because he was injured and played two of the games. Uh, Tom Wright started a couple of the games. So reducing it to just all three games um, doesn't fully paint the picture. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, that there are other guys who have been a pretty heavy part of this squad. They just haven't started all three games. But I still felt that this was quite interesting, in particular, the 9, 10, 12, 13, because I'm going to come back to that when I talk about inconsistency of selection. On to the final graphic, just to explain this. On the left, you've got those three teams and fixtures that I uh, mentioned already. And then Scotland through to Wales, those are the games on the Northern Tour uh, at the back end of last year. In yellow on the left, the players that have started all three games. In yellow, uh, in those right fixtures, is the players that have started back-to-back -back games. So not necessarily three games, but at least starting two games in a row, which again, I think does throw up some interesting things. Let me go back to the two points that I mentioned to start with. Consistency of selection. For me, this is mainly the front row. Because you look at Slipper, Pareki and Ala Alatoa. And I already mentioned Ala Alatoa has an injury now, so what happens there is pretty fascinating because Ta Taniela Tupu, when he had to come on really early against the All Blacks, I thought he looked miles off it in terms of fitness to be able to do a big chunk of a game. So what they do there is going to be pretty key. So you look at those guys who, across two regimes, I would suggest, for the most part, are probably the number one choices. And I think it's been an issue for the Wallabies for a while. If that's the consistent selection, I'm just not sure it's quite a good enough front row when you compare it to the truly best international teams in in the world. You know, I think that is a little bit of an area of weakness. And is it going to get any stronger? The other area to mention as well in terms of consistency of selection, Skelton now is very much in, as I mentioned, but who's going to come in and partner him? We've seen Frost 
on a couple of occasions this rugby championship. Arnold in there as well. If you look back to the autumn, Frost, Swain, Caden Neville as well. So there's different options there, but who partners him in that engine room, I think is going to be pretty fascinating. The most interesting point, though, I think is the inconsistency of selection. And this in particular evolves around the halfbacks, nine and ten. Look at the different names you have in there. So across, what is it, eight games, you've got Quade Cooper and Bernard Foley, the only ones who have, have started a couple of back-to-back -back games at fly half. And if we break down the numbers, they've had four different starting nines in their last eight test matches, five different starting fly halves in their last eight matches. And if you look at the different combinations, it's six different halfback combinations. I don't care who the coach is or what you're trying to achieve, how you're trying to attack. That is such a key area of your team. And I think that speaks towards the fact that they're not sure. Certainly, I don't think they're sure who their best fly half is at the moment. I would have thought Nick White is the guy at scrum half personally to start. But then outside of that, they need to get those halfbacks sorted if they're going to be able to build a game plan that Eddie Jones wants them to execute when they come up against the best teams in the world. The other area that I mentioned earlier as well is at centre because Len Iketau, I think, would be, as we can see from that graphic, the starting 13, but he's picked up an injury and his injury was a shoulder injury. It rumoured to keep him out six to eight weeks. The injury happened a couple of weeks ago. So let's say it's four to six weeks now. The Rugby World Cup starts in about a month's time. So he's either only just going to be back just in time for the World Cup in terms of, and therefore, what's his fitness like? Um, and if he's not, then how quickly into the group stages is he going to be available? So I think that is a big, big loss. After that as well, after Iketau, we've had Fakheti, Paisami, Hodge, Karevi, Pattaya has come in. Maybe he'll play 13. So those centres, I think, have a lot of question marks. That whole midfield from 9 to 13, I think, is pretty uncertain for the Wallabies. As I say, I would expect Nick White to be the 9. I've always been a big fan of Karevi and the fact that he's coming back from injury. I think he will be the 12. I think Eddie Jones will want him. What they do in 10 and 13, for me, absolutely fascinating and absolutely key as well. So that was the big thing when I looked at selection. That, that was the thing that stood out to me, I think. The strength of the front row and then from 9 to 13. But you can let me know what you think in the, in the comments section down below. Let me just move on to one final part of the video. Um, hopefully those spreadsheets kind of make sense. I tried to make them as, <laughs> as easy to understand as possible. Um, but stat, a few stats for you for, to give an indication of how this Eddie Jones Wallabies team is playing at the moment. They had five yellow cards in the Rugby Championship, which is comfortably the worst of all four teams. As I've already mentioned, they scored four tries, which is the worst in terms of their attacking game. They've beaten 60 defenders, which is the worst. And they made 286 carries, which is 57 less than the next side in South Africa. And when you go back to the fact that I think the kicking game hasn't been very good, you look at that attack at the moment and there are big, big questions to answer. I wonder what Eddie Jones is truly thinking rather than what he says to the media in terms of the challenges that face this team. I've felt for a while that Australia have enough quality in their team to be more dangerous than they are. But it has been a massive disappointment to the second stint of life under Eddie Jones. And I think in particular, the 9-10, the 12-13 is a pretty big question mark over what is the best there. There are other questions as well, as I've mentioned, their set piece and their forward pack, I think, need to be stronger. And that's why I've got concerns over the front row and who comes in for Alan Alatoa. But there we go. That was kind of my assessment, really, of where the Wallabies are and what is going wrong with them at the moment. The caveat, I suppose, just to end the video, because I started it with a few caveats, is their World Cup draw is on the right side of it. They don't necessarily have to improve too much to be able to get themselves to a quarter final and maybe even a semi final. And maybe that would be good enough for them to try and build upon with the Lions Tour coming up in 2025 and with a home World Cup coming up four years later, that maybe that'd be enough platform. But as things stand at the moment, it's not been great. Hope that's all right. Something a little bit different for you in today's video. I'm well aware of that. Um, that's why I say I hope the spreadsheets and, and, <laughs> and everything kind of makes sense. Drop a comment down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.